difficulties between you um, and our colleague, you, the Antarctic Public Schools. So thank you for following those directives. My name is Bridget Passa. My primary role in Antarctic Public Schools is as the English Language Arts Supervisor for grades 3 through 12. Um, but one of my added duties, which I love, is planning and facilitating today and some of your other activities this week. So I'm happy to be your facilitator as we take you through this first very important morning where you have a lot to learn. Um, let me uh, address the seriousness that is COVID and then we'll get into how it comes from. So as of right now, um, we are operating with the three feet whenever possible. Uh, masks are completely optional. Uh, I have no problem admitting that I am fully vaccinated. However, I am choosing to have a mask on at this time. If you feel comfortable with a mask on, please keep it on. If you are not vaccinated, we're going to trust that you're masked. Um, because we know that, that, this, that this virus has mutated, turned into Delta, um, and that unvaccinated, unvaccinated people, while they can both spread it, um, we are just putting our trust in you that if you have chosen not to get vaccinated, you are keeping everyone else safe and wearing a mask. We will get further guidance uh, this afternoon um, on expectations for navigating COVID from our superintendent. Uh, so know to expect that. We're coming in on a big day uh, as we prepare to greet all our students. Okay. Now we can get into the fun stuff. So I didn't get to do this last year. We had to do it virtually. So I had all these smiling faces on a computer screen. Um, and that's done. So I am thrilled to see you all uh, here today. Um, I did, and you may be trying to get into your laptops. Let me tell you right now that they need to be charged. Um, so, and you will not need them today. So this morning, so you can just settle back and relax. All the information you present is going to be linked into that big agenda that we have sent out to you. So you can reference that at any point. In the event you did want to reference the agenda, um, I did make it a tiny URL. So if you want to take a quick picture of that or find the tiny URL, um, while I'm talking, you are welcome to do so. Let's see. Okay. So, oh, your laptop's gone on. Inside that bag, there's a yellow piece of paper that is going to be critical to getting on all of our software into our LMS, et cetera, et cetera. Keep that yellow piece of paper with you at all times as you get through this week. When you get to your buildings this afternoon, our teacher specialist or your academic dean um, is going to get you logged in and get you to your QACCS email if you don't know how to get there. So we will get you on your laptops when you're in your buildings and we're able to fully charge them. All right, so there are so many people excited to greet you this morning. Uh, and we are going to start with uh, our superintendent, um, Dr. Salins. Uh, so Dr. Salins is as excited as I am to see all your faces, so she uh, is on her way down to bring you greetings. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Gentlemen, welcome, welcome. Um, first off, I do want to thank um, Mr. Shrekakash for hosting us this morning um, here, the principal here, and I also want to thank Bridget and your team for getting this all together because it's well done um, and under the circumstances and really thank you very much. There's also some other people I'd like to just um, introduce you to that are part of the folks that I work with every day. I don't put my glasses on, so I'm squinting, but um, Carrie Dennis is the assistant executive assistant for me, so you might have an interaction with her, getting anything you can know, email her. And then you'll see Lana Powell, she is our communication specialist, and you'll see her everywhere with a camera in her hands, so I'll be smiling when you see her. She's going to be here for sure. And then behind her, you'll see Ms. Janet Falls, who's an acting deputy um, superintendent here, and has been this wonderful wealth of knowledge and a part of our team. And then Ms. Mrs. Amy Udon, she'll just wait. She'll be coming up to you and see her later. She's our new assistant superintendent. And then you'll see Mr. Sid Peter And he is our um, chief operating officer and works with all our facilities and such. Um, and actually, I see the president of your union back there. And you'll just wait and see what they're going on. Really good partners to be as well. So again, we've been working a lot with Finance County. 
Um, I'm actually the new superintendent, Patty Stanley, and I'm happy to be here, and I'm so happy that you're here, and that you've come to join our team, our family, um, and that's what I consider it. We're a big family, we're here for our students, and we work collaboratively together to make sure that we meet their needs. Um, this actual event every year is the kickoff for the new school year, so believe it or not, it's like, you know, I even have butterflies today because it's the kickoff of our new school year for 2022 school year. Um, and we know the last 18 months have been extremely challenging. And I think we have a little bit more challenges to go yet as we open, but our main focus and priority is to make sure that we can have students in the building in person instruction. Because the most important thing for students, most students, is that they are with you face to face. Because you're their teacher and that's the most important part. So we're going to do everything we can to work collaboratively together um, and to instill protocols so that we can continue to have students in school. That's the number one goal. Kids are going to be in school this year. So um, with that being said, you'll see some guidance that will be coming out today, but essentially we're going to be doing what we've been doing, which is masking when we can. I mean, I'm vaccinated too as well, but mask when we can, wash our hands frequently, um, use hand sanitizer, clean up after your students when they leave, and those kind of types of things. Um, if we all do that together, work together, I know we'll be able to keep kids in school, which is where they need to be. Um, I know some of you are transferring from another district and you're bringing some experiences with you, and we thank you for those experiences, and we welcome those experiences. Um, others of you, I know this is your very first time, so you probably do literally have butterflies. And if you didn't, then I'd kind of be a little concerned. <laughs> because um, doing something new and, and different um, can be difficult sometimes. But I do want to tell you that your students will meet you where you are, and then they'll grow with you through the year. So just keep that in mind. Our students are very resilient. Um, they're very caring and loving, and they will absolutely meet you where you are. And, and as you grow, they will grow with you, which is really awesome. Um, so I guess this is a time where being a superintendent, I'm supposed to give you advice or something, right, going into the new school year. And I would just have to say that um, I, I think that we just need to be patient with the process this year. Um, I think we need to ebb and flow as things change um, and adjust to the changes. Uh, I think that's the only way we can be in order to be successful. And then the only other advice that I would offer is to try to celebrate anything you can. So even the smallest small milestones for you or for your students, take the time to celebrate them, recognize them, and, and be gracious with that. So that's, the, that's what I would offer for you, is to be patient, um, even flow through the process, and make sure that you take opportunities to celebrate whenever possible. So with that, I bid you a very good year with many, many successes. And again, thank you for choosing Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Um, we're absolutely delighted to have you. Okay, the next person who would like to welcome you uh, is my guest. Uh, this is Amy Hudak, uh, Assistant Superintendent of Great Roman Instruction. This is Hudak. Thank you, Bridget. Welcome, everyone. Um, you are going to get a lot of information throughout this week. Every one of us. I'm, I'm working on 30 some years, so we all sat where you are. And I know, just like Dr. Salem said, some have experience, some are sitting with the butterflies. Hi, Mary. <laughs> uh, so, just know that this week you're going to get a lot of information. So, I'm, I'm speaking specifically to the folks who are coming in that are new, new to the profession. Be present every night, go through the information, process it, take what is applicable to you so that at the end of the week, you're not trying to take all of that information in because it is so overwhelming. So just one day at a time. Um, and I want to also piggyback, thank you Bridget for all of this. I know a lot is falling on your shoulders and we really appreciate you on a dime. We will switch everything up just because things are changing. But I am very appreciative. This is a, we have a lot of new teachers this year. Um, that you are here and that you are 
going to be a part of the Queens County Public School family. So thank you for being here, and I wish you the best, and have a great year. Despite things that step on as I hug them goodbye, 
loud person, but <laughs> good morning, new teachers and returning staff. I see some faces out here that I already know. And good morning to everyone who is here today to welcome these amazing professionals to our district. Welcome. Boy, we are glad you are here. Uh, first, I wanted to take a moment to tell you a couple of my truths. First, we have the best job in the entire world. In my 10 years of teaching, I've never felt like I was going to work. I always felt like I was going to have some fun. Yes, some days are a little more difficult than others, where you feel like your head fell off, rolled onto the floor, and the kids kicked it around to talk to practice during recess. <laughs> But this is the most rewarding, fulfilling career in the entire world. As you embark on your careers, I want to take a couple of moments to just give you some tips and tricks of the trade. First, collaboration is key. If you are a first year teacher, your primary objective this year is to survive. Uh, I remember my first year of teaching, it was quite a bit rough. College prepares you for writing objectives, standards-based teaching practices, psychology, developmental theories about how students learn at different ages. But this year, you're going to learn through experience. And hear me when I say this. You are not alone. You have amazing educators here in Queen Anne County Public Schools that are trained and qualified and know how to be flexible in an ever-changing environment. When you head to your schools this week, take moments here and there to get to meet the teachers. The veteran teachers know that this week is all about setting up the classrooms. Next week's all about meetings. So they're going to be there. That's where I'm going to stay. Ask questions. Ask for advice. Ask what a typical school day looks like, feels like. Use their knowledge and learn from their grace. Second, get involved. Because building positive relationships with students is fundamental. A child will not learn from someone that they don't respect nor trust. Get to know your kids. Wong and Wong, remember them? Yeah. Said that the first two weeks of school should be all about establishing those routines. But they also said that you need to be and create multiple activities where you get to learn the kids in positive ways. Start out building those positive relationships with students so that when you interact with them later on on a serious level, it comes from a place where you mutually understand one another. If you can, attend your games, go to band concerts, choir concerts, be a co-coach in an athletic activity, go and join a club outside of school. They love to see us at all levels, high school included. Also, <laughs> this is my favorite, Know that the relationship you build will be tested over and over again, especially my middle school and high school friends. But if you have a positive relationship with a student and you have to have that serious discussion, they are more off to learn and not repeat the things that they're not supposed to be doing if it's coming from a place of respect. Third, mental health and social emotional awareness and support is of the utmost importance this year. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, the leading researcher on mental illness, they conducted a study in 2019. One in five adults suffer from mental illness. Approximately 49.5% of adolescents. Now, these are some outdated statistics because think about what the pandemic has done and the effect that this has created on mental health. We are the front lines. Thankfully, before the pandemic, our county was already starting with mental health awareness and getting uh, practices and building relationships to help reach students and get them the direct services that they need. However, last year, the unimaginable happened, and everyone went through trauma. You, the kids, the parents, the community, everyone did. We all went through a traumatic historical event. The effects of social isolation, quarantining, fear, panic, and now the new Delta strain, those things are not going to go away on their own. There will be lasting impacts for years to come. As society changes, 
our role as educators must evolve. We must listen and respond to our students' academic and social needs. <clears throat> you need to have a heightened sense of awareness of your kids. And what this means is you can notice the subtle changes in their behavior. The sudden long sleeve shirts or sweatshirts, the lack of appetite, the increase in hunger, the lethargy, their changing friend groups, those subtleties in the classroom and the hallways, you've got to be observant. I want to give you a glimpse into the reality of teaching, not to scare you away, but to prepare you for what this county went through last year. Last year, teachers across this county at all levels, elementary, middle, and high school, had students that were struggling with food scarcity, homelessness, absolute poverty, mental health, and suicidal thoughts. Every year that I've taught in this county, I've had students go through these struggles. But last year, the sheer amount of students going through multiple compounding difficulties and struggles was absolutely out of this world. I had students watching their siblings, students that were working during the day to help put food on the table at night, students that were homeless, students that were in hospitalized programs for suicide prevention, and students who just needed someone now more than ever before. That's what our role has evolved to. Now, I'm not the only one that has these stories from last year. You can ask any teacher in any of your buildings that you go to this week. Ask them what it was like. Because every spot in this district is different from the north end to the south. But what I do know is that this year, there's a lot of different things that are going to happen. And there's a lot of unknown. But we know what good teaching is, and we know to support our kids. Use the teachers, staff, your administrators, your guidance counselors, the parents, community members. Reach out to me if you need help or you need a, or you have a student who needs help. Contact someone. It's okay to ask for help. It truly does take a village. You are embarking on the most critical time of education, a time where we can make absolute positive change and difference in these kids. Be open to their needs, listen and respond to them, and give them the help when they need it. Fourth, embrace empathetic teaching. Empathy is when you can place yourself in another's perspective and genuinely understand it enough to share that person's feelings. Empathetic teaching is the new form of teaching that has come out in many of your college classes, you heard so many different pedagogies and developmental theories, names like Freud and PJ and Maslow. This is something new. It is about getting to know your students, both their academic and social needs, in order to make learning meaningful to them by making connections. Connect your personal lives to topics in your classroom. Listen to their struggles. Listen to them in the hallways. Connect that to your classroom. Teach them more than just standards. Teach them how to be good human beings. Embrace empathy, teach it. Respond to your students and make those connections. The learning will be so much more powerful than you so. All right, so time for some really quick tips to avoid embarrassment and just <laughs> utter misunderstanding. So first, never go out in public in pajamas. <laughs> you are bound to run into at least five different people that you know, their mothers, their brothers, their siblings, their cousins. Welcome to small town living. Um, next, make friends with the secretaries, janitors, and Sodexo employees in the cafeteria. They run the building and hold it up, and they deserve our respect. Lessons and objectives will never be perfect, so don't bust blood vessels over it. Focus on engagement and standards. Have fun with the kids. Next, use candy as bribery. It works. <laughs> and then call home for the positives too, not just the negatives. 
If you see a student who is doing something really awesome in the classroom, or even outside the classroom, maybe you saw them at a soccer game, call home. Our parents, guardians, and community really do respect us and they do support us. So, and they love to hear the causes too. Lastly, I want to leave you with a quote that propels me forward every day, and a quote that one of my college professors once told me. The influence of a great teacher can never be erased. Everything that we do matters and will have long-lasting impacts on the kids that walk through our doors. Be there for them. Show them that you care. Connect with them. Yes, teach them the standards, but always also teach them just how to be a good human being by demonstrating them. Now, remember, every decision that you make, everything that you do in the classroom, will impact our society in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I think that was pretty easy to tell why she is our teacher uh, over the years. So thank you for being here this morning. I'll see you soon. Oh, and I do have a little prize for everybody. So before you leave today, you'll get a little, a little pin that says you make a difference every day. No, we're already here. We have oh, Thank you yes. so much. We are so glad you're here. Bring up the prizes. I do want to know that um, our Chamber of Commerce donated bags full of goodies. They were the baby or the purple bags that were at your socially distant seat today. So we thank the Chamber. I bet you should have got a handbag as well. If you didn't see me, uh, I have extras. Uh, we had those at our leadership retreat uh, last week, and then Nicola had a them, so I'm sorry. Uh, so if you want to get into them, get into them whatever you want, but uh, if you want to wait for a break, otherwise we're going to turn to Derek because we know you're going for, we know you're going for much needed uh, chocolate. Uh, so one more person um, who would like to greet you uh, is actually a new position to the county. Uh, so in a small county, how many of you have taught in a small county before? Or short county? Okay. So in a short county, uh, people have lots of different roles. So aside from um, being the ELA supervisor and organizing this, I also manage our Title II A grant. Um, the Title II A grant has to do a lot with professional development, um, hiring, recruiting, training teachers. And along with that grant this year, we were able to work in uh, an equity teacher specialist position. Prior to this year, a lot of our equity work had been done with outside consultants. Um, we decided that this funding to look in-house for a real expert who could help grow our knowledge and understanding of equity even more. Because uh, I'm the grant manager, I sat in on the interviews for this position. Uh, having done a lot of equity work on my own um, and, and, and loving all the learning that there is to be done, I found myself while Ms. Bentley was answering questions taking notes to use for later reference. So she is an incredible asset to our county, to our public school system, uh, and she is so excited to be here today to welcome you. So Ms. Christine Bentley, come on up. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I'm <laughs> oh, this is great seeing all of you here. So thank you for giving me just a smidgen of your time. I am really grateful to see all of you in this space. Great to have you guys here as colleagues. And I just wanted to take a minute to, well, now that we can sometimes, put a, put a face to the name, because hopefully I'll be seeing you fairly frequently. As Mrs. Passon said, this is a new position for Queen Anne's County. Um, this is a new role for me. But I am very excited about equity here in Queen Anne's County and everywhere. Equity just means that we are, our, it's our responsibility to make sure every student has what they need to succeed. And our belief is that every student is capable of high levels of success. And that's not a small task sometimes. Actually, it's not a small task any time. But you guys are teachers, right? So you've already accepted that challenge. You clearly do not shy away from challenges. But equity is something that is um, a priority for this community and for our school system. And I'm here to help you in that role. So if there's anything that I can do for you, hopefully I will see you again frequently in your buildings, 
Um, but if there's other supports that you need in terms of equity strategies, resources for your classrooms with regards to diversity and inclusion, as well as cultural responsive teaching, please don't ever hesitate to reach out to me. And again, like I said, I look forward to seeing all of you in your buildings. And congratulations and welcome to Queen Anne's County. Thank you. So I hope you feel uh, successfully welcomed. Uh, we, we are, you can tell, very thrilled that you're here. So many people wanted in. I'm welcoming you, but I had to have it at time. Uh, we will meet a lot more people at lunch. We um, have several community uh, members coming. Uh, several of our commissioners are coming. Our sheriff is coming, some board members. So there will be lots of new faces um, at lunch as well.